Hello guys, it's me. Before we actually start the video, I want to talk about some housekeeping stuff. Basically, uh, the schedule is going to be there's going to be two videos every week, one on Monday and one on Friday. Um, currently, we're just going to be doing World War One videos. The next video after this will be covering um, the planned British land ships for the First World War and the 1919 offensives that never actually happened, which I think is pretty interesting and I think is worth examining. But, um, you know, for now, we're just going to be covering the British land ships Mark IV and Mark V. So starting with the Mark IV, the Mark IV um, had two variants as usual. The male variant was armed with two of the six-pounder CWT guns, which originally the six-pounder naval guns were used, and the CWT guns were cut down, less bulky versions made specifically for tank use, which was much more effective. In addition, it had three Lewis guns. It weighed a total of 32 tons, which was pretty hefty. Um, the field female variant was armed with five Lewis guns and weighed 27 tons instead which was much lighter, though Lewis guns, we'll be talking about them soon. Um, if you look with 8 men as usual with the same layout as the Marks 1 through 3, it had a commander, driver, 2 gearmen, and 4 gunners. It had an average speed of around 3 miles an hour, though the maximum was around 4, which was m about 1 less than the old versions, but in my opinion, the improved weaponry makes up for that. It had an operational range of 35 miles, which was a 15 mile upgrade of the Mark 1, which is totally worth the reduced speed. Um, the, the Hotchkiss magazines in previous model had large, stiff, bulky magazines that weren't clip clips and were just literally straight magazines and they took up just way too much space. The Lewis gun was less effective as a tank gun and prone to overheating, but the smaller 96 round pan magazines took up less space and you could hold more of them, so they were chosen instead. But once actually strip mag 50 round strip magazines were made for the Hotchkiss, later models of the Mark IV were given those instead. On to armor and production. The Mark IV had improved quality armor. It was better quality. However, the, it had the exact same thickness ranging from 6 to 12 millimeters, which was the exact same as the first three models. This caused it to remain susceptible to armor piercing machine gun rounds, though the improved quality of the armor made, made K bullets no longer effective. Um, unditching beams, as you can see on the right, were deployed with them, which allowed them to cross wide trenches and craters and artillery holes, which previously they would not be able to do. Um, the British Mark IV was the most produced British tank of the war. I believe the FT is the only one tank actually produced more than it. However, there were 420 males, 595 females, and 205 unarmed supply versions that were nicknamed Tank Tenders. The British Mark IV had several additions tested on as like mortars and radios. So these weren't ever really produced, it's more like, oh hey, we got this tank on the field, let's slap a mortar on it and use it for that. Um, the British Mark IV was basically just the improved Mark I that the army wanted from the start. And it was produced in mass finally after the Mark III to the pleasure of the British army. It was so popular that the Weimar resistance used it for resistance suppression after the war, and Japan bought a few as well to kickstart their tank program along with the FT-17. Variants of the Mark IV are the unarmed supply version of the tank tenders, which there are 205 of, as you can see on the bottom. 40 captured Mark IVs also found in Germany's very few tank regiments. They were modified by the Germans, given German six pound guns, and renamed to. I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess it up. Beutepanzer wagons. Um, just like unditching beams were attached to cross trenches and craters, many Mark IVs were also modified to use a tadpole tail which not only made them longer and able to cross larger areas, areas, it also allowed many of them to carry mortars, which made them more effective and gave them more versatility. These, this table tail also allowed them to cross the wires trenches Germany, German, blah, blah, Germans were making by the end of the war, which they mostly did to counter tanks. Luckily, the table tail, well, you could, you know, bolt it on there and bam, it extends the range. Now onto the Mark V. The Mark V male tanks were armed with two six-pounder CWT guns and four Hotchkiss machine guns. They weighed much less than previous at 29 tons. The female tanks were armed at six Hotchkiss machine guns and weighed 28 tons. It has the same uh, average and max speed of the last of the Mark IV. However, its operational radius was yet again upgraded from the previous model, going from 35 miles to 45 miles. The Mark V did still have a crew of eight. However, the new Epis epicyclic gearbox system that was taxed by the Mark II's, which we talked about in the previous video, 
was put in, meaning that the gearmen were no longer required. Instead, they were replaced with two more gunners, which allowed them to have a machine gun in the rear hull of the vehicle, giving it more cover fire options when escaping. The crew layout consists of a commander, gunner, driver, and six gunners. This allowed a machine gun mount to be placed in the rear hull of the tank, giving it additional firepower. It also had much better armor, with it being 8 to 16 millimeters, which was necessary when facing more German anti-tank stuff like more field guns um the germans were finally using tanks of their own by this point and anti-tank ri rifles and technology such as the bundle grenade or anti-tank rifle the tank giver her giver tank giver 1918 um the, the tank giver could punch through this thing's armor so of course it had to have thicker armor but production, the Mark Fives have a be more weaponry, a better Ricardo engine, the pre better previously mentioned gearbox, and more uh, improved stuff and technology compared to previous models. A total of 400 Mark Fives would be made, 200 males and 200 females. I, that's a mis type. But due to the Germans being their own tank, mainly captured on Tom Tank tanks, several female tanks were converted to hermaphrodite models. Also known as Mark V Composites, this modification to the female tank consisted of replacing one female sponsor with a male one, giving it a six-pounder CWT gun on one side. This could theoretically give it more fighting capability against enemy tanks, but it caused one side to have more weight than the other, kind of screwing up the weight ratio, in addition to leaving the other side vulnerable. But the Mark V Composites were a pretty good attempt at modernizing female Mark Vs against enemy revolution or enemy opposition. The Mark Fives went on to serve during the Russian Revolution and were sent to the White Army, but also captured and used by the Red Army, and they served with the Soviets until the early 30s, but though they were basically just in reserves at this point. There are two main variants planned for the Mark V. Up on the upper left, you can see the Mark V Star, which was basically just a longer tank design to cross the wider trenches that the Germans were digging. Many were produced, but they never saw combat as the war ended too early in a 1919 offensive that were planned never happened. But they served with the French until they phased out in the 30s. As you can see from the picture above, they looked very similar to the Mark V. Meanwhile, as you can see in the lower right, the Mark V Star Star was a modified de design of the original Mark V Star, fixing the ridiculously large turning circle that having a longer tank caused. Only 25 were built, with only one being complete completed before the war actually ended. As seen from the picture below, this design really did earn the name the landship, and I doubt it would have been mass produced even if the 1919 offensive happened, likely being passed over for the Mark 8, which we will comment on in the next video. So my final assessment of the tanks, the Mark 4 and Mark 5 were the last seriously produced landships, as we'll cover in the next video. The following designs after that had many problems, and were just becoming outdated at that point with the FT proving what the future of tanks would hold. However, they were much better than what preceded them. The Mark IV improved design, such as finally all of the fuel was stored in a singular location, so a random bullet couldn't have a much lower chance of actually hitting the fuel and exploding the tank, um, which was a long overdue improvement to the Mark I, and the Mark IV was the improvement that the British Army wanted the whole time. Then the Mark V was essentially the final form of the Mark I. Basically, the Mark V was just the best technology and best armor they could slap into the Mark I hull, which they were still producing at that point. Because basically the plan was that anything after the Mark V would use an entirely new hull seen in the Mark uh, VI and I believe the Mark VIII, which we'll talk about in the next video like I've been saying this entire time. The engine still however faced frequent failure and while ventilation was improved, CO2, po CO2 poisoning happened more than it should have, which is none. These landships land were basically a combination of all the lessons previously learned and served World War One in the trench as well. As we will see in the next video, the landships that were supposed to follow were never produced or used like the Mark Fives and Fives, Mark Fours and Fives were, which means the concept of the landship died out in the war, and these were really the last landships. The final landship ever used in combat, to my knowledge, was a Mark IV called Excellent, which was repaired by a naval gunnery base in 1940. Which, it's pretty unclear about what they did, either they destroyed enemy cars or just their own cars for fu fun. While that's a low standard for combat, it is technically the last usage and showed that the tanks were, you know, kept around just in surplus and reserves even when they were far outdated. 
But uh, yeah, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Next time, like I said before, we will talk about the marks, um, mark f six through ten or through nine, which uh, I'm pretty excited for. And that'll sort of wrap up to heavy tanks, and then we'll move on to the whippets, which is I'm even more excited for. But until then, this is gonna be the tank index out. Peace.